after the ceremonies are over mm -hmm. and you are receiving a lifetime award uh, as Hungary's Beat Poet Laureate. It's a very high honor that not everyone gets. So yeah. you should be proud. I am very proud. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I started uh, writing poetry pretty late. I was 28. Uh, when I, I left Hungary in 28, moved to Amsterdam, uh, left in a, tri in a tricky way, and there I uh, started to, to write, uh, just to avoid being a junkie. I, because when I got there, my previous acquaintances were, became all junkies, and I didn't want to use junk, so I started to write poetry. And I can say that poetry saved me. So... Uh, and, uh, I think it I, saves all of us, and it's more important now than ever in today's world. Yeah, I, you know, if if we look back to the past, the 1848 revolution in Hungary started with poetry as well. Sándor Petrofi wrote a, a great poet and poem, and and uh, and recited it by heart in in front of a huge crowd. You know, there was the Spring Revolution in 1848, and that that poem played a big part, played a big part in that revolution. So poetry really matters. I do yes. believe in that. Yes. So <clears throat> I lived in Amsterdam for two years, and then I moved to the States, uh, St. Louis, and then San Francisco, and then New York, and I met a lot, a lot of beats. Uh, Many of them already uh, <clears throat> gone, unfortunately, and I learned a lot, lot from them. And uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased. It's a great company. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, very honored to to get the honor with Anne Waldman and uh, David Amram. I mean, I, I've see, I haven't seen uh, Anne Waldman perform, but I did see David Amram. And every yeah. time I, sp I speak about jazz poetry or beat poetry in Hungary f uh, for Hungarian audiences, I always mention David Amram because I think he was one of the first who played uh, music with the with the beats. Yes, he was. If if I'm not wrong, I think it was Jack Kerouac and him who who started. But I might be wrong. Um, you can <clears throat> correct me in that. But I no, saw him. No, he was very he was very young. But yes, he did. Yeah. He did start with uh, Jack Kerouac. Let's drink to that. I figured if we talk, we sh I should drink some good red wine <laughs> for, for this honor. Uh, I'm really, I'm really glad and happy that I don't even know who nominated me, but I thank them. And I, and I greet everybody uh, in the beat poetry community. And I'm very proud to be part of it. So. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you their names, but there are over 20 people that really? nominated you. Yes. Wow. That's, yes. that's, I, I thought there was only my, maybe a six, seven, eight, but 20, no. that's really, really something. It's really yeah. something. So, <clears throat> so, I, so I, um, do you want to say a little bit of poetry for us? Yeah, I, I have to put my new glasses on okay. <clears throat> and I, I have my little book. I figured I should read from my book that was published in the States. A Hermit okay. Has No Plural. It was published by Singing Bone Press in 2015. And uh, I figure I just start from the, from the beginning and actually it starts with the very, very first poem I wrote in Amsterdam in 1986. In vain. With my left hand on probation, I'm looking for my father and my mother in my pocket. I drag them out and put them into my other pocket. Yet they climb back 
they don't like the climate. The next, the next poem is called About to Decide. Through the interfacial hair tiny crack of the locked train window, blown in snow pellets freeze an ice relief on the windows, window sill. The rushing train scares a head on away from the ice sedge marsh along the tracks. A raven chases off a pair of turtle doves from a pine tree bow by to see the tracks drilling through the woods. A pine needle punctures the snow and suffocates in an ice seat. A magpie is watching all these. The bird is still at home. It wouldn't want to go, but the sky is not the same. I like that one. Okay. Well, you have to know about these poems that I write in English and in Hungarian. And people mm -hmm. ask me that which language, how do you choose? And uh, it depends what I read. If I read in Hungarian, then I, and I write in Hungarian. If I dream in English, then I, next day I will write in English. And many of these poems, I, I, and I rewrite the Hungarian poems to English and the English poems to Hungarian. And if, if you pair them, you see some differences if you speak both languages. Since I'm the I'm the author, I can do whatever I want with them. So yes. I'm not really translating them, but uh, rewriting them. Okay, this one is called uh, the Noontide and the Chemist. The funnel of a once-to-come quizzical noontide edged itself to the long-colored branches of ancient trees. A subtle chemist surprised the seashore crowd by burning himself in becoming the subject of his own chemistry as he was washed away. The residue didn't register anywhere, only a saw-toothed shadow of a scapula was seen later under a sinister cliffside. <clears throat> well, you know, I hope you and everybody will like these poems. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, so I, have, I do like those poems and I wanna know what is the atmosphere in your country as far as poets? How are they received? My, po my poetry, how it's received? Well, you know, I'm one of those who, who uh, have no roots in, uh, in literature in Hungary because I was, I was 42 when I came back to Hungary. And that's when I was kind of introduced to Hungarian uh, uh, liter to the Hungarian literary scene. So I didn't go to school with anybody. I didn't graduate from the same university. As a matter of fact, all I have is a high school degree. <clears throat> so I didn't have many friends. And as you know, it's the same all over the world. If you don't know many friends, critics are overlooking you more than if you had friends. Yeah. But I can't complain. Um, you know, my poetry and my translations, I translated a lot of American poetry. I have three anthologies out of, one is a Native American poetry anthology, um, and two, of a, two other anthologies are uh, contemporary American poetry. And I'm working on the fourth one now. Hopefully I'm getting, I'm going to get the rights for everybody I asked for. So I, I, I get some highlights here and there and as a matter of fact this honor is putting some some light on me now some spotlights i've been introduced i've been uh, interviewed by several newspapers um, when when i put it up in may you know when i was told by you that i got this that i'm going to get this mm -hmm. everybody saw it many people saw it on facebook so i got uh, lots of people congratulated me and newspaper uh, <clears throat> included in their news section and uh, and uh, university school TV inter uh, interviewed me so I, I get I get some lights now and uh, and it's it's pretty helpful and I can't complain I publish a lot you know I don't write a lot of poetry but but most of them you know, most of what I write is going to get published either in English or in Hungarian. Okay. So 
I can't complain. Do you want to uh, recite something in in your language, your native <clears throat> language? Okay, how about how about reading this poem in two languages, okay? Okay. It's called Cemetery at River Savannah. I was in Savannah once. Uh, <clears throat> I even gave a lecture at the, uh, at the Savannah University there. Okay, <clears throat> here it goes. Leaning to the oyster brick fence, watching as ants order ants to labor, you seem to perceive whips in their forearms. You won't talk about the place you've visited in your dream to anyone. With pre-written answers, you ignore the questioners. You smooth your forehead, the peeling of your skin is windblown dust. Under the moonless sky, your shadow walks the sun to the other side. Same in Hungarian. Temető a szavanna folyónál. Osztriga kajdlóból épült kerítésnek támaszkodsz, nézed, amint a temető füvetlen részén hangja dolgoztat hangját. Látni véled melső lábai között a lótető karmaiból készült ostort. Nem mutatod meg senkinek ezt az álmodban látott helyet. Előre megért válaszokkal veszed a kérdezőt semmibe. Végig simított homlokod, hámló bőröd, szélmozgatta por. A holtalan ég alól árnyékod elkíséri a napot a folyó másik oldalára. I, I love the way that, that the language flows. It's, I think it's much more beautiful than English. Well, it's the structure of the language. They are, they are totally different. Uh, Hungarian is a, as a non-Indo-European language. You can do anything with this, with mm. this language you want. I mean, I can, I can give you a sentence in five different ways and it, it means five different things. Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very rich language. Lots of synonyms. I mean, English is very, uh, very rich too, but it's kind of structured different, differently. Yeah. So we are lucky with this language. We can, we can read uh, the Greek poetry as they were written. So, which in English it's it's not as easy, not as easy, as easy. I experienced that. So. Um... We're going to be seeing you on Saturday, September 5th. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to all three days of the festival. Are you going to be watching it every day? I'm going to be watching, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And thank you, everything, Debbie, for uh, your hard work. And. Uh, for, it's uh, nice to see you as much as we can see each other in person. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah hopefully we can see each other in person soon enough. Yeah. Next year we're planning. Uh, okay. Everybody will come from all over. We'll bring I'll them in. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay. This is Michael Amitin, Michael Amitin from Paris, France, and he is the this year's uh, international Beat Poet Laureate. And I'm very glad to meet you and see you here today. <laughs> How you <My> doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. <laughs> Hanging in there. <laughs> Thanks for hosting this and making this happen, Debbie. Well, it's not easy in these times in the COVID, the COVID year. I hope it's only one year. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I, I want to know a little bit about you. I I know that I do know. I can tell you that um, there were uh, more than a few people recommended you to become our International Beat Poet Laureate. Um, I don't know a lot of the people that come to me to recommend others. And um, it's, I find it quite interesting, you know. I learn a lot about you before I actually 
um, give the final say, you know, as to who's going to be nominated. But um, I oh, think okay. I think a good choice was made this year. I'm happy to have well, you. Thank you. So you you did a, a you did a thorough background check, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Did you check that in my, in my criminal record wasn't is expunged? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Oh, so tell uh, us well, a little case, bit about and yourself. Accept, and you accepted me anyways? Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I was, How, I'm very uh, honored to be part of this. And it's, really, it's a really nice, uh, wonderful sense of community that you're uh, cultivating here with everybody. It's really, really nice. So. Yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, That's good. Oh, somebody's barking. <laughs> yeah, I guess he didn't like my cho choice of words on that last statement. <laughs> He'll pipe down. So, um, tell us, um, how long have, how did you get into poetry? Or how long have you been um, writing? Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting story, Debbie, because I've been writing I mean, I started writing songs when I was really uh, like 14, 15 years old. And I've been a songwriter pretty much my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of dabbled in writing poetry over the years, but never really looked at it at myself in that way, at, at, in that light as a poet. I just thought of myself as a musician and songwriter first. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing a recording in one time in um, Detroit, Michigan with a... a I really looking at the lyrics to my song, he says, you know, at the heart of everything, you know, you're a poet. I said, I never, I said, okay, well, that, that sounds good. <laughs> I didn't really see myself that way, but you know, and, and years went by and then I had sort of a moment that was kind of an epi epiphany of sorts. Um, I had just moved to, to Paris. This was about 11 years ago. And, um, I had befriended a, um, a woman in my neighborhood in, in Montmartre area of Paris, and uh, she, her name was Leslie, and, and uh, she was schizophrenic, and she, uh, one evening, it was, it was a, I have a poem about this I'd like to read it after, but um, one evening, it was, it was Christmas, Eve and it was pouring rain and she's screaming at the top of her lungs Michael Michael I'm not gonna she's like you know 15 feet away but she you know she so and and I said Leslie Leslie so she came over and she um said can we have a cup of coffee so we went to this little cafe and we had a cup of coffee she it turns out that her father was the editor of a beat poet magazine oh, wow in the 60s in Paris, in Paris. And she, when she was a little girl, a lot of the avatars of the beat poet scene, including Kerouac and Ginsburg, stayed at her father's house when they were passing through town, when they weren't at the beat hotel or where other, wherever else they stayed while they were here. So I thought, oh, this is a really great story, you know, and then she, and then as the conversation went on, she found out my, it was my birthday that weekend, and, and she just got really excited, and she said, just wait right here, and she ran over to her apartment, came back, and gave me this, let me see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's an anthology, oh, wow, it's yes, an anthology Ginsburg. of Ginsburg, and it's Ginsburg poems written, and it's, it's a ton of them, and they're translated. They're English and French. And it was just so sweet she gave me that, you know. And um, oh, there I am. Anyways, so uh, I went back to my apartment. It's still pouring rain. And I started leafing through and reading some of the poems. And I read some of the, you know, Ginsburg's hits before, you know, Howl and Kaddish and stuff. And it just completely blew my mind. I mean, it, it really, <laughs> it was a moment of epiphany. And I just stayed up all night that night writing, and I started writing poems, and that was it. I said, I uh, basically never looked back. Wow. So. 
that's that's actually fantastic that you had that experience. Yeah, I want to show you. Really I want to show you. I want to show you. This is whoops. If I could show you, I don't know if I can show you. This is going ah, to be your your plaque that I'm going ah. to send to. Um, I think Chris will put it up on the screen for me in a minute so you could see it. I, I saw uh, a little glimpse of it while you're holding it up. That's, that's really nice. I'm really honored. Thank you very much. I held off um, sending the, all the plaques um, to the different laureates coming in because of the postal service. Um, Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. there it is. Oh, terrific. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Well, I'm going to hang that on my wall proudly. And, uh, with the honor. And let alone display it online. And yeah, that's really great. I think what's I'm, really I'm great really, is. really happy and honored um, to see that. I think what's really great is how we are able to connect to all different people around the world and um, kind of just hang out like the original Beats did, you know, back in the day, mm -hmm. but in a different way. But we still, yeah. we still are able to do it just on a larger scale, I think. Yeah. So do well, you have... A, um, it's a wonderful connecting rod that you you know that you're perpetuating. It's just you know, like you say, it's like it's just all these tentacles reaching out everywhere. And and since you invited me into your circle, I've had some really terrific conversations with some of the other beat poets, and it's really been a pleasure to get to know them slowly. You know, albeit yes, online, but it's just, it's really great. I look forward to hopefully we can all you know meet meet in person for sure. Yeah. You know, until then. So do you want to um, say a few words, a poem or something to us? Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I, ha I wrote a poem. This was the first poem I wrote after that story I just told um, about that, that woman, Leslie. Um, I don't know what happened to her. I moved out of that area. I've never seen her since, but, it, but I'll, a catapulting moment. You know, she said it was the hashish. She said it was the hashish that caused her schizophrenic breakdown rhapsody. That Rocky Mountain night, her father drank himself balmy by all means. 30 years she was doing time for ancestral crimes, woven through night soft lullabies, half French, half Anglais, three quarters gone and hanging by a thread. We met a Montmartre rainy night Christmas, madcap motos buzzing our weary late fifties toes, ash blown eyes fighting off the Yuletide snow, pure ebullient as a harmless child in a harbor where trust runs mild. She screamed her salutes, whirring past the heads of the big town brutes, as if everyone she'd ever known were a million miles away. Soaking wet, we entered the Golden Cafe, Deco Night Dim, Patron. Oh, wow. I hope you swim. Her father was an editor, friends with the... Well, dear father of sweet child home, here's a story to rattle your tombstone. Your daughter's alive and handing out big ticket rides in flash red silent nights. And then she cried, wait, it's your birthday? She flies out the door saying in minutes she'll be back and soaking hair draped over her light bulb face, she hands me a Herculean anthology. Pages to lick the frost off Big Top Paris, Allen Ginsberg poems, two languages, 
and then she scampered off into eternity. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I really enjoyed that. Thanks. So are you going to be watching, um, are you going to be watching the whole festival uh, starts Friday? It starts Friday, uh, this t tomorrow, this coming yes. Friday? Yeah. It's going to uh, be going on over the weekend, correct? Yes, all through the weekend, yeah. Uh, Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. So it was okay, nice talking good. to you. Um, is, and it's a pleasure, Debbie. It's really good to see you mm -hmm. and, and to talk to you after, after exchanging all these messages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And keep up the good work, huh? Yeah. You too. And I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll look forward to watching for the weekend. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Hi, Andy. How you Hi. doing? I have I Andy Clausen. I have Andy Clausen here, and um, he's from Woodstock, New York. Is that where you are? Yeah, I reside in Woodstock, New York now. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Andy, because I know I've read your book, but tell the audience uh, a little bit about yourself. And your well, okay. uh, association with the Beats. Right. Uh, I was uh, uh, I was raised in uh, in California, Oakland, California, and uh, I I uh, read uh, Jack Kerouac, and uh, he he turned me on to uh, Allen Ginsberg, Gregory Corso, and Bob Kaufman. Read all of them, and then uh, I uh, eventually. Uh, Met them all, and uh, uh, Gregory lived with me for a while, and uh, I took care of Alan's farm. Uh, I was good friends with Ray Bumser. I lived with Janine Palmy Vega for 12 years, and uh, I've been uh, uh, doing poetry readings around, uh, I guess, around the world. I read in Kathmandu and Amsterdam and uh, all over the North American continent. And uh, I've uh, I worked uh, poetry in the schools, poetry in the prisons, and I've written a book called Beat, uh, uh, Latter Days of the Beat Generation, a first-hand account, which uh, talks about uh, my relationships, uh, you know, anecdotes and all kinds of other things with the beats of the last 20 years, the historical beats. And, and the point of the book is to... Uh, uh, prove that uh, beat is a living thing and yeah. that, uh, the beat generation, you know, like uh, I don't consider myself a neo beat or a baby beat, maybe an after beat, but I consider mm -hmm. myself beat. Well, I think we're all beat these days. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... once, I, once I went with my roommate, <laughs> she said, man, you know, this is when I was really young. And he says, look at your bedroom. He says, you're beat. <laughs> you know, because it's a messy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, not, we, we might have that in common. <laughs> we might have that in common. Yeah. But um, I think it's very important that uh, we keep the this beat movement going um, for future generations. Uh, because it yeah. gives it gives us all a voice, and there are a lot of people in this world, especially right now, trying to take away our voice. Um, so, um, oh yeah, I think poetry helps. It helps to um, to get around that, you know. Um, I think we're in a situation right now. Most people don't realize the peril we're in. We could lose 10,000 years of civilization. This could fall apart. This could be like Mad Max. This could be roving bands or it could be techno fascism. And yeah. what's, uh, like in one of my poems, like I talk about, it's 
Like, I want to write about love. I want to write about the, the music that the stream is making. I want to write about, the, oh, I remember this baseball game I went to. But every time it seems like uh, the situation that we're in creeps in because all of that will be meaningless if, if uh, we don't stop the direction of uh, uh, of this chaos that's uh, uh, taking over this country. You know, the, the virus, the the the, yeah. uh, the environment, the uh, uh, fascism, all of it, yeah. and uh, it puts me in, it puts me in a weird place because I I, I want to write something funny. I want to write about you know love, but even when I write a love poem, you know, it's like it starts coming back in. You know, I, I, I've lived this I've lived over seventy years in this country, and uh, I all my lovers, all the people, my culture, the music that I love, jazz, all that stuff, you know, and, and yeah. Uh, it's, it's going to be nothing if if uh, it keeps going this way. Well, that's uh, that's why we have to keep our voices active. I think um, we can only do the best we can, and <laughs> you true. know, that, you know, that's true. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's uh, you uh, you know you're feeling yeah. impotent as because, long uh, as long uh, as uh, we don't as long as we don't give up and you know we keep uh, that hope alive that uh, through our words we can change some things uh, not everything is possible but a lot of things are possible yeah we have like to keep when that. i was yeah when i was when i was in prague with uh, alan ginsburg and he uh, uh, uh talked to these scientists there and is it we think we had a hundred years left for the planet. I says, then what the hell are we, do? what are we supposed to do? And he said, you keep telling the people the truth and keep trying to make their life a little bit better. You just keep doing it. Even if, you know, it does seem, uh, I probably won't see the end, you know, cause I'm oh, but uh, my kids and grandkids, they're going to have to deal with some heavy, yeah. heavy things. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 you know, I, I think that if the people, if the people had listened to, uh, to the poets, if the poets hadn't been, see what happened when the beats got over, they were kind of popular in, in coffee houses all over the country. There were people trying to write like Ginsburg, trying to write like Snyder, trying to write like your friend. And mm -hmm. you know, thinking that, that there was something there. And, uh, the the, uh, the the big boys realized, you know, uh, 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 we can't let this happen again, and that's why they they really work at uh, suppressing uh, uh, poetry that's uh, saying something. They, they, if you can write in intellectually obscure things, that's fine. They'll promote you, but. Uh, they, they don't want any more Ginsburgs and Kurtzels and Kerouacs and Burroughs, you know, it, it, because it really began something that uh, upset them for a while. You know, they it really birthed the hippies, and yeah. uh, and and uh, but uh, right now they they've tried to close the door, and it's like we have to figure out some other way to get the truth of the people because. You know, and, and also even to get them in the headspace where they listen, it's uh, well, it, it's, I'm trying hard, I'm trying hard, and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm committed to this uh, movement um, to bring awareness to others. Um, so all of you are helping, yeah, you have, you have a lot of, yeah, I see you have a lot of poets involved. That's it. That's a good thing, you know. They and they're willing to identify with beat. A lot of them aren't, you know, yeah. because uh, they were disparaged in, uh, by the critics and stuff in their day. But I, uh, so it's a good thing. I just wish uh, we were a little more open up now with the face masks and the six feet. That's a, it's, yeah. and it could go on for a while and. You know, I'm going to be 77. I figure 
and I I love reading my poems uh, uh, out loud to people, you know. And, 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 and am I ever going to really do that? Am I ever going to look at a crowd of eighty hundred people and you know orate my poems again? I I'm not so sure because this thing could last years. Well, we're gonna hope that you can. Um, yeah. Do you want to read something now? Sure. Okay. Uh, this is a, this is the last, uh, this is the way I end my book, uh, uh, beat. Those were the days. Those were the days I used to say, maybe they never come again. Well, that was easy. They don't. A lot of people I grew up with are gone. Oh, we can see them. Not like a ghost or apparition, but inside my eyes. I see Janine lurching through a garden through the window, unable to walk to it. How can one love flowers, bushes, and plants so much? And I see her immense pride as a student in the Harvest Moon Prison Writers Workshop to claim their minds and hearts with eloquence to fellow inmates. I see Alan coming down the street, gives me an awry smile, and turns into a doorway. I know he's on a mission. I close and open my eyes and see Neil behind the wheel. I see him streaking through the sky in big sur. I hear him talking. Not really, I'm imagining only in every day the quick and always prophetic lines of Gregory Corso crackle through my walls. Just now, his influence, my next line was, there's no such thing as if. I was going to begin my next line if Bremser, if Bremser is in the afterlife. Bremser, I can feel his presence, ride his astral pop blues rhythm. Geez, an afterlife might be swell, right there? All us renegade poets and lovers get to hang out. Al Jasbo Collins said, the said bird was gone. The bird was never more here. The big said remain, remain. The autumns must be filled, and the markings are left the big spring. May the human survive. And the beat go on and thrive. May there always be unexpected fun and collateral pleasure. May there be compassion for human flesh. Imaginations exalted, explored, expansive verse hailed, and passion revealed, indulged in the making of musical words. May you travel all over America and the world. May wondrous women lead us to peaceful prosperity kicks. Splendidly inundated in kicks, the mountains shivering under our footsteps. Books opening in the sky, the words tumbling off their pages, raining yawns and epics of the dawn poets, the attic streets, highways, meadows, and mountains, taverns and plains, the everyday extraordinary. Let everything be written, written. Let the craft written be put in its place. Let the masses. That it's the everyday woman and man and child have no reason to fear penises and vaginas and the bodies and minds attached to them. Praise be the everlasting rule and the gospel of infidels. Let her- heritage and ethnicity be no hindrance to anything. Let's verify hypocrisy. It was not the beat that normalized one and take all. Not to beat that sold religion and used it for power and sexual dominance. It wasn't we who created the choice of Elmer Fudd on crack, screwed with duck on steroids, a Wall Street double speak queen. This history will be optional. Be what the people want to believe, not what it is or was. The reality that lives in the papers and televisions is not sustainable. Praise be the non ending, not terrible. Oh, wow. That's the way I end my book. Yeah. Um, that was wonderful, Andy. I want to oh. tell you, um, I'm so happy that uh, you're joining our our family of beats, um, and uh, and you're being uh, named the state of New York uh, beat poet laureate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, so, someday, if it's possible, I'd like to uh, come to Connecticut and do a reading. You know, that'd be cool. 
Oh yeah. I mean, I would love to have that happen. I was hoping it would happen this year, but um, there's oh. always next year. You know, we'll, we'll try for next year. Um, we oh, might, you know, if, if things get better, uh, maybe we won't even wait until September. Maybe we'll we'll meet before that. We'll see how it goes, I guess. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it was very nice talking to you today. And um, you're going to be watching the, or yeah, it's going to be live streamed on uh, Facebook, uh, the festival starting tomorrow, Friday, uh, the 4th. Wait, the, uh, the, the, those polls that, uh, that I take you live, will, they, will I have a chance to see them on that or what? No, no, I, you'll, those will be seen on Saturday. Um, oh yeah, oh great. Yeah. That'll give me something to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I know I want to watch other people do it, but it's like, uh, yeah, that'd be great. Well, thank you very much, Andy, and uh, we'll see okay. you soon, okay? It was very yeah. nice stuff. Yeah. All right.